Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Crime in Court. My name is Heather and this is an update in the Delphi case. We just got a brand new document hot off the press or on the docket, I should say, I guess. And this is uh, Richard Allen's defense team has filed a response to the motion in limine from the state where the state is basically saying we don't want his metallurgist his forensic metallurgist to testify because we're whiny babies basically blah 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 it doesn't help our case so we're gonna say he can't testify which is so stupid because each side gets experts and you can't just cross off everybody's experts just because you don't like what they're gonna say and this guy is an expert in the metal, the the materials, the what happens under certain conditions, what happens to the materials when it's fired from a firearm, things like that. So if you have a bullet, obviously we're talking about ballistics here because the state claims that there was a bullet found at the scene. And um, we don't know how it got there because Richard Allen says that he was out of there. He didn't have his gun with him when he was walking the trail earlier that day. So he will read it in another episode. Sorry, I have planned coming up. We're going to go through the whole, um, well, we don't have the actual transcript, but someone has pieced together all of the different portions of information from different court filings and things, which gives us a good general overview of what happened in that interrogation when Richard Allen was interrogated by Jerry Holman. He was the lead investigator and we're going to get into Holman and all of that. So keep, um, make sure you are subscribed, hit that like button, and we'll get started today on our topic. So let me shrink myself here. And so this is the defendant's response to the state's motion in limine. That's the, basically that means they want to exclude it regarding a defense witness. So this was the defense witness, Tobin, William Tobin. So it comes now. The defendant, Richard Allen, by counsel Bradley A. Rosie, and respectfully requests that this court deny the state's motion in limine regarding defense witness file marked September 27th, 2024. In support of said request, defendant Allen states as follows. One, the state's motion seeks to exclude testimony of William A. Tobin. Two, Mr. Tobin is a 27-year veteran of the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the FBI guys, with 24 years of experience at the FBI laboratory and an expert in forensic metallurgy. Okay, guys, I have his resume. We're going to look at it. But yes, this guy has an extensive nine-page curriculum vitae. These are courses that he teaches apparently um he's got he teaches physical metallurgy shaping forming of metals we'll go through this in a little bit but i just wanted to give you guys an idea yes he is an expert in metal and what happens to metal under different conditions so, all right, so number three, Indiana Rules of Evidence 702 provides that an individual may be qualified as an expert and testify to matters so long as it helps the trier of fact to understand the evidence or to determine a fact at issue. Mr. Tobin's expertise and testimony will assist the trier of fact in judging the credibility of the processes and protocol used in the discipline of firearms identification for the following reasons. So he's going to help the, basically he's saying he shouldn't be excluded because he's going to help the jury understand specific things in the trial that they're going to need to know when it comes to processing and testing the metals and whatnot. So here, A, Mr. Tobin has a bachelor's degree in metallurgy, a hard science that is int intimately connected with the process of toolmark identification. 
So that's the other thing is the tool markings, the striations that are left once a bullet leaves or a casing, once the casing leaves a firearm, what are the markings that are left behind? And can you reproduce those markings? Do they replicate at, with every shot that you take? Or is it a one-off? Or, you know, maybe you get it every three shots or something like that. So you can't, I don't know. But this cannot be the exact science, the, the deal breaker that everybody says is, you know, the the this ballistics basically is um a junk science so that's what this guy is going to testify to and to how how things are processed and why it's a junk science so mr tobin has an academic background in statistics which is also pertinent to the process through which firearms examiners draw their conclusions Mr. Tobin has previously employed was previously employed with the FBI for 27 years, having worked in the FBI laboratory as an expert in forensic metallurgy for 24 years. Met forensic metallurgy is an expertise that is part and parcel to the skill of toolmark expert or identification. So it is it's a a, a subset of it. Like it is a very specific subset of tool marking identification. So for him to say that it is not relevant for Nick McLeland, the prosecutor, to say that it shouldn't come in because it's just going to confuse them or whatever. I think that's bull because it's going to help them understand the metal, the way things are processed or should be processed, if it was processed correctly or not. Or tested correctly. Uh, D. Mr. Tobin has testified as an expert witness on more than 200 occasions in courtrooms throughout the U.S. Mr. Tobin's work and opinions are recently cited in the case of uh, Abruqua versus State. The High Court in Maryland ultimately vacated Abruqua's convictions and remanded the case for a new trial. The court's decision was driven in part by the defense's assertion that the underlying process of firearms identification is flawed, all of which was supported by Mr. Tobin's testimony. You see why? Do you see why Nick McLeland doesn't want him in? He testifies to the fact that the underlying processes of firearms identification is flawed. So, if this casing that they found, this unspent casing that they found at the, or around, whatever you call it, I have no idea. Correct me in the uh, comments if you guys know. <laughs> I've fired a gun one. Um, anyway, so basically um, this unspent round, we'll call it, so it wasn't fired. Somehow it cycles through the gun, but didn't fire. And it's somehow Richard Allen's. Yet we've basically been able to assert from the filings that we've read so far that the girls were not shot. They were stabbed. So a force or a sharp force object was used. Not a, not a gun. So I don't even know. Yeah. Somehow they're they're tying this unspent casing that is um could have been there at any point or could have been planted by oh say law enforcement or somebody that didn't want their buddies to get arrested if they're all the in, the, in this like oldness. <laughs> they could all be in an oldness cult together. We know that there's oldness who are the corrections officers at the Westfield Correctional Facility. So it doesn't really, you know, strain credulity to think that officers, you know, street cops are also part of this Odinus thing. And even, you know, the, the sergeants, the lieutenants could even be part of it. The judges, Judge Gull could be part of this thing, this whole Odinus thing. I'm really starting to realize that the government 
I shouldn't say this because I'll get banned. Never mind. But there's corruption everywhere. I'll just say there's corruption everywhere. And um, we just got to keep our eyes open. And maybe the defense is really onto something. And they've opened up the door to so much more to see. That's where I'll leave that. Anyways, all right, so the court's decision was driven in part by the assertion of the underlying process, blah, blah, blah. So he's trying to testify and say, basically, he's going to discredit the state's witness, the state's expert witnesses on the ballistics. So you can see why Nick doesn't want him there. The state's examiner, Melissa Oberg, is nothing more than a lab technician. While she has received training in the discipline of firearms examination, anyone with a high school degree could do the same. Damn, that was a burn, Brad Rosie. That was pretty funny, though. Um, <laughs> and I like that because I like that. Um, yeah, that's a big burn. Like, okay, a monkey could do this job, basically, is what he's saying. So we need experts that actually are experts in this field. State of Indiana references Dr. Eric Warren, who is an expert in firearms identification. Dr. Warren has been retained by the defense in this case. The state, so they have their own firearms identification guy, which is Dr. Warren. Okay, so he's already been retained. The state, in its motion in limine, attempts to compare Dr. Warren's expertise with that of Ms. Oberg by pointing out that the two of them are both members of AFTE. The comparison stops here. Dr. Warren has a PhD in biological sciences and is current AFT board member. So he's not just on, he's not just a member of whatever AFTE is, he is a member, a board member. The state took Dr. Warren's deposition on October 3rd, 2024, during Ms. Or Dr. Warren's testimony, or des during Dr. Warren's deposition, Dr. Warren acknowledged that an academic background in metallurgy, a hard science, would be helpful, would be helpful in understanding the process and firearms identification. So there you have it. That is why they went and got themselves a metallurgist. Dr. Warrens testi testified that a background in statistics would help would be helpful in understanding the process of firearms identification, specifically noting that he anticipates changes and advances in the field, which will be driven by new statistical approaches to summarizing the findings of any particular examination. Dr. Warren testified that the critical community within which Mr. Tobin associates, associates, sorry, Dr. Warren testified that the critical community within which Mr. Tobin associates has been helpful in moving the firearms identification forward by pushing for new and better processes. So he is part of this group of experts that are in the field that are pushing towards enhancing the field and making it better, more efficient, better processes, better protocol, all that. So he is one of those people that spearhead movements, apparently. All right, so finally, Dr. Warren testified that there does exist a healthy debate in the industry as to whether or not the findings of firearms examiners should be inadmissible in courtrooms across this country. And in fact, there is a movement towards examiners being less definitive about their conclusions in courtroom settings. Because, I mean, there's... Why is this not staying on the highlight feature? Okay. Uh, because it, um, you can't just say like to a degree of scientific certainty or whatever, like there's always that like little catchphrase you have to say as an expert and to what degree of certainty that you can say it. And there's very specific things on that. So this is a movement towards the firearms examiners having to be more definitive in their conclusions and less, um, 
vague, I guess, in what they conclude in their courtroom settings. They're like, they're, we need to set standards for this. Mr. Tobin's testimony is relevant for the following reasons. The President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology has been critical for many years of the methodology employed by toolmark examiners across the country. The National Academy of Sciences has issued two reports, one in 2008 and one in 2009, which have both been critical in part of the accreditation, certification, and lack of independence laboratories of conducting firearms the, and lack of independence of laboratories conducting firearms examinations. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Mr. Tobin is intimately familiar with the findings and work of both PCAST and NAS, I'll call them, as it relates to the discipline of firearms identification. The concept of understanding a process which generates any result, whether it be in a laboratory setting or in the course of one's daily activities, is relevant to understanding the meaning of the result or final product created by the employed process. Simply put, Mr. Tobin's testimony tends to prove that the process of examining firearms and drawing conclusions from those examinations is unreliable and misleading, and therefore the conclusions offered up by the state examiner should be given little to no weight, which is exactly why you have an expert witness to try to discredit or um, uh, come off more credible at, than the, your opponent's uh, expert witness in the same field. So their firearms expert like you said, only has a uh, high school degree or could be done with someone for, with only a high school degree. I don't know what the expert or what the lab technician's education is. I'm not, I'm not shaming her for anything, but she, they're saying that anyone with a high school degree could have done this test in the lab. So, um, yeah. Mm. I forgot where I left off. Okay. Little to no weight. Mr. Tobin's opinion on these matters is relevant to the credibility of the state's lab technician who examined evidence in this case. Yes, it is. Absolutely, it's relevant. Finally, the state cites the case of State of Indiana versus Caden Smith. This is a trial court case out of Marion County, Indiana, which is correctly or currently currently up on appeal. Sorry, guys, I'm having a lot of pain, so I'm on pain. <laughs> so if I'm slurring my words, that's why. All right, so the court's order in Smith provides very little rationale for the court's decision to exclude Mr. Tobin's testimony regarding the firearms examination process. To the extent the state wants to offer up trial court level authority to support its claim, Defendant Allen would draw the court's attention to the case of the people of the state of Illinois, Illinois shout out, versus Ricky Winfield, a circuit court case out of Cook County, Illinois. The Winfield decision was handed down on February 8, 2023. The court in Winfield was critical of the discipline of firearms identifications altogether. So you hear that, guys? There was a court circuit court case out of cook okay so in this particular case what did they do let's find out sorry <laughs> maybe i shouldn't do this on pain pills but woo, it's fun all right so the court in winfield was critical of of the discipline of firearms identification altogether the court ultimately drew the conclusion that the state was entirely prohibited from introducing any testimony from their alleged experts regarding firearms identification specific to the case. Judge Hook's rationale was articulated over a 41-page opinion. The Smith case offered up by the state contains no such analysis. So, there you have it. I think, uh, for all these reasons, blah, 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 they think the state's motion in limine should be denied. What do you guys think? I think 
This is, um, I think they made great arguments as to why the um, expert, Mr. Tobin, should come in. Let's take a quick look of his CB, his curriculum vitae. So, Bachelor of Science in Metallurgy, Masters of Arts in Special Studies, Graduate Studies, Metals. Hold on. My dog wants to go. He wants food. So, he's... Uh, Walking around and begging me. All right, so graduate studies. So he has a, well, it doesn't say he has a PhD, but he has some more extra graduate studies in materials, science, and engineering. He might have done additional work outside of his master's degree program to get another, like, expertise, expert, um, more skills, basically. All right, so additional courses and symposia so these are oh so these are courses i think that he took not that he teaches so physical metallurgy shaping forming of metals engineering metallurgy we're not going to read all of this but you see there's fractology fractal fractography whatever that is like a lot of big words calculus one and two okay so he does have the math skills that they were looking for as well um, applied stat statistics for engineers and physical scientists. I mean, this guy's got some up there classes that I would never take because I wouldn't understand a word coming out of the teacher's mouth. All right, so professional experience, uh, research metallurgist, what plants metallurgist, more research, Monarch Aluminum Company, National Aeronautics and Space. NASA, okay, uh, this guy worked for NASA, the U.S. Marine Corps, The he was a platoon commander, uh, at the FBI, we know that, and yeah, he worked for NASA as well, so this guy is like a very experty expert. Court appearances, he's testified as a wit an expert witness in a 301 local, state, federal, criminal, and civil matters. And this was back in, like, I don't know when this was updated. I th 2023. So it's, it's pretty current. Uh, 40, in 46 states, he's uh, <laughs> he's been to 46 states to testify. I wonder what the four are that he has not done and he wants to if I, I bet he wants to you know round it out to the full 50. all right disclaimer this curriculum vitae was furnished by william a tobin to an interested party for informational purposes only blah 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 blah, blah. okay um gold uh, bronze star with combat five or combat v i'm just thinking that's five these are oh these are commendations. So these are like awards and things that he's received. Numerous letters of commendation, more uh, from the U.S. Attorney General. All right, that's a good one. The director of FBI, uh, two of, uh, directors of FBI, of the FBI. That's pretty good recommendations. Um... What else do we have? Professional affiliations, all these acronyms that I'm not going to read. He's been affiliated with liter uh, literary acknowledgments, references, media. So areas where he's been talked about or been featured. Uh, some, I, this book, this is a book and the sea will tell. Uh, 60 Minutes he was on, televised interview. So, I mean, he's an expert. I don't know why the state is trying to say he's not. <laughs> Other things that he's done, all sorts of stuff. Requested by uh, UNSCOM. I don't know how you say that. UN Weapons Inspector in Iraq. Okay, guys. National Research Council. National Academy of Sciences. He's pretty well known i would guess in his field pretty well versed in this um in this topic the, these are some of his publications got quite a few here i'm not going to go through them but yeah there you go 
noteworthy sample cases that he's been on. Okay, the uh, aircraft, TWA-800 aircraft disaster. The flight in route to from New York to the Kennedy Airport to Paris, France. There was a mid-air explosion. So these are the things that he looks at. So he investigated the metal, I'm assuming, of the explosion remnants from the aircraft. Like this guy probably knows what he's talking about. When it comes to metal. All right. Mid-air breakup of Missouri Air National Guard. All these other things. Bombing of the Olympic Park. Explosion of the USS Iowa. Resulting in, in, in numerous sailor fatalities during a training operation. A Susan B. Anthony silver dollar recovery. Product tampering. Train derailment. An explosion in a coal mine. Do you see this guy's, this guy's, um, really experienced? Ooh, what is this? U.S. versus Buck Walker and U.S. versus Stephanie Stearns. A hippie couple alleged to have taken the lives of Malcolm Mack and Eleanor Muff Graham on Pol. Pumira Island in the South Seas, a skull found by a beachcomber, a deserted beach in the South Seas, 12 years later, depicted on the cover of And the Sea Will Tell by Vincent Ugliosi, the author of Helter Skelter and Prospector Prosecutor. <laughs> Prosecutor of Charles Manson. Okay. Vincent. Bugliosi is the prosecutor of Charles Manson, wrote Helter Skelter, and also involved in this hippie couple who took the lives of this other couple in the South Seas. So you can see he go he has a very wide range, is what I would, what I'm trying to show you. The Oklahoma City bomb bombing. He was involved in a bicycle fatality. Corrosion thing when things corrode, he looks at that too. So, explosion trajectory analysis, terminal ballistics reconstruction analysis of military engagement of a shooting in the jungle slash rainforest. So he reconstructed or or not reconstructed but analyzed, I guess I should say the um, ballistics from this particular shooting. So. What else does he do? This is his miscellaneous work letters, hunters, tree stand, wire rope and cables, fire sprinkler system, corrosion, foundry and casting matters, uh, obliterated serial number. Ooh, a serial number identification and marking restorations. He can do like when people scratch off the serial numbers on their guns and things. Oil drilling equipment, fasteners, nail screws, staples, bolts, nuts. Missile, uh, missile guidance systems, components, radar waves, um, aircraft, boat, and ship corrosion, aviation components, false claim acts, fraud against the government, automobile accidents, components, fractures, fail failures, speedometer, headlights, taillights, all of the things. Timing mechanisms, clocks, watches, manufacturing processes, statistical process control, metal building, corrosion, mine disasters, transport disasters, maritime aviation, rail, quality control, standards and specifications, welding, fire and explosions, M4 launch and penetration mechanics with M855, terminal ballistics, gunshot residue, bullets, firearms, tool marks, body armor. Apple brandy alembic in distilling process. Why there's some kind of, some kind of uh, metal in the distilling process of apple brandy. Wonder if that's any good. I've never I don't even know what brandy tastes like, but operational failures, explosions of firearms during user use, aka kabooms. It's <laughs> all various uh cases Featured on America's Most Wanted, Unsolved Mysteries, 60 Minutes, 2020, Dateline, Primetime, Eye to Eye. I wonder if we saw him, what he looks like, if we would know. Probably you guys that watch all these shows would probably know who he is. 
48 Hours, Forensic Files, FBI Files, the Discovery Channel, the Learning Channel, all the all the channels, National Geographic, Canadian Broadcasting, CNN, BBC, what else? Speaking engagements, he has traveled all over the U.S. and spoken about metallurgy and his expertise about it. And you can contact him yourself. This was easy to find. I'm not going to dox him, but you guys can contact him yourself if you would like. Um, so if you're interested in his services for identifying whatever metal needs you might have. So he is pretty well versed in metal. And for the state to say this guy's not an expert or isn't relevant is just absolutely ridiculous. Like all their other arguments, I think they are very childish and they object to everything. And you can tell they're just fighting so hard to not let the truth out and to not be transparent about things. So it just makes you wonder what on earth are they hiding and if you don't even let experts come in because it doesn't help your case it hurts your case which that's the whole point of the defense bringing their experts in is to refute your expert so if it hurts your case oh well maybe you don't have a good enough case and maybe you shouldn't be process uh, pr prosecuting if this you know if you don't have the evidence that you need maybe this isn't your guy the thing. So I leave you with that. We have, I'll, I'll be coming out with some more Delphi updates. We're going to trial soon. So I kind of want to get you guys more prepared on, you know, giving you more like a, we've been through everything, you know, we've been through a lot of the uh, court documents together in the filings as they come out, but I'm going to kind of give you some more perspective, different perspectives and different overviews of things. So I'm going to try to, you know, uh, shake it up and give you guys some more stuff coming up to trial, which unfortunately, as you guys know, there is not going to be any video or audio that um, at this at this point in time, Judge Gull has pretty much banned everything. She's only allowing, you know, a certain set of uh, journalists, actual uh, like a reporter, actual reporters with you know, like CNN or ABC or whoever th that they're going to let in and they're not going to let in independent journalists who actually are telling you guys what's happening in this case and reading through the documents. And that's my fear is that they're not going to let any like people like us that are actually following the case. They're not going to let those people in because for whatever reason, it, I don't think she's going to recognize them as real journalists. If like if I went there. I can't because I'm disabled. So that's another thing that, you know, I'm disabled. I can't just like go and stand around all day to just, just be told I'm not media. You know what I'm saying? So that's another reason why she needs to bring this to the public. Let us stream it, view it, hear it. Just give us the audio of it if you can't give us video, which I really would prefer video. But if all we got was audio, great. It, it, this is just ridiculous that she's blocking. You guys all know. If you've been following my channel, you know how I feel about Judge Gull, the Almighty. So she just likes the power woman to be like holding, dangling, dangling the carrot over our heads as she has all the power in the world. Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a. Mm, a little longer than I meant it to be, but uh, we went we went through his uh, CV too, which took some time. So let me know what you guys think. Should Tobin come in? Do you think uh, his other expert, Doctor, what was his name, Warren? I can't remember it now. Do you think the other? Oh, it was in this filing. Do you think his other expert, Doctor Warren? Yeah, Doctor Warren is enough. Do you think that's enough to refute the lab? the lab technician or do you think they need to come at it with both experts i think both but i want to know what you guys think do you think judge cole's gonna let this in i i don't know i really don't know i want to say she's gonna probably 
disqualify him from testifying, but I really, really hope that she doesn't. So that's where I leave you. Have a good one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.